Now that we've seen how easy it is to make a call in Asterisk, let's take a few minutes to make sure we understand what is really happening inside Asterisk when we make a call. We'll start by taking a closer look at the extension we set up in the last module. Just as we did before with our Hello World extension, we added the extension we created to ring our phone into the internal underscore users context in extensions.conf. Remember that this is the context we configured for each phone. This is the location in the dial plan where Asterisk will look for an extension dialed by the phone. The extension name we chose to dial our phone is 6002. The length of the extension is not restricted. It may be 1, 3, 4, or even 20 characters long. It's completely up to you. More than one extension could also dial this same phone. We could easily have a different extension that looks identical except for the extension name. And other extensions dialing this same phone could live in any context including the same context this extension is in. The first priority of an extension must be 1. In our simple example, this is the only priority. The application we are using is Dial, which attempts to connect to another device or endpoint and bridge the call. We use the Dial application to ring phones, as well as to make outbound calls over a VoIP or traditional trunk. Let's look at the syntax for the arguments passed to the Dial application. The format for this argument takes the form of technology slash resource. The technology must represent an available asterisk channel driver such as SIP, EECS, or DOTI. A valid resource must be the name of a phone or trunk identified in the configuration file of the specified channel driver. In our case, this is SIP.conf. Phone-2 is the section name contained in the square brackets. The second argument passed to the dial application is the timeout. This is the maximum number of seconds the endpoint will ring. If the timeout is reached without the endpoint being answered, the call exits the dial application and moves to the next priority in the extension. If there are no more priorities, as is the case in this example, then the call is hung up. If the call is answered before the timeout is reached, the call will stay bridged to the other endpoint until one party hangs up or the call is otherwise dropped or transferred. Under normal circumstances, dial plan execution does not continue after any of these conditions are reached. Now let's take a step back and see the role played by the dial plan during a call. We're going to review the steps taken to get one phone to connect to the other. Then we'll see what the call looks like on the asterisk CLI as it is happening. This breakdown focuses on how asterisk handles the call. We describe the process generically and simply to make it easier to follow. Actual calls are usually more complicated. Here we are abstracting those details away for the sake of this discussion. Our call begins when a user dials a number on a phone that is connected to Asterisk. The method by which the phone transmits the dialed number to Asterisk will depend on the technology or protocol in use. In later chapters, we'll review the most common signaling methods in detail. For our example, we've used the SIP protocol. So Asterisk will check the configuration stored in SIP.conf to see which context this endpoint is configured to use. Next, Asterisk will search the dial plan starting in the context specified for our endpoint in SIP.conf to try to match the dialed number to an extension in that context. When Asterisk finds a match for our dial digits, 6002, it will execute the dial plan application listed as the first priority. This will dial the endpoint that is specified in the arguments contained within the parentheses, a SIP phone with the name Phone-2. If the phone is answered, these two channels are bridged and will remain this way until the call is hung up or transferred. If the phone is not answered and the timeout specified as the second argument passed to dial is met, our call will exit the dial application and because there are no further priorities to execute, the call will be hung up. You'll want to be able to recognize asterisk CLI output as the call executes. The output available there can be crucial when troubleshooting complex dial plans. To start, we'll run the command dial plan show 6002 at internal underscore users. This command will display in the console the specified dial plan address. We see exactly what asterisk will do when extension 6002 in the internal underscore users context is dialed. We can use this information to anticipate asterisk's behavior when the number 6002 is dialed from an actual phone. Notice the extension displayed looks very similar to how it is declared in extensions.conf, with the extension number listed at the left and each priority along with its associated application listed in sequence. Now we'll dial 6002 from our phone. 
As we initiate our call, we see that each step along the way, asterisk prints a brief message to the CLI, denoted by two dashes. For the first step in the sequence, we see asterisk is executing the dial application, and displayed in parentheses are the dialing channel and the device that it is ringing. Take a look here at the information in brackets. This is the context, extension, and priority that is invoking the dial application. The first portion, 6002, is the extension that was dialed, at the internal underscore user's context, followed by colon 1, which is the priority number. Moving through the steps of our call, we see that the CLI shows us the receiving endpoint ringing, then answered, after which the two phones are bridged, meaning that they can speak to and hear each other. They will remain in the state until the call is terminated or transferred. Recall from earlier how we saw that a call between two endpoints is the result of two channels being bridged through asterisk. This is illustrated by running the command core show channels, which lists all of the active channels regardless of the technology. We can see clearly the number of channels is listed as two, with one active call. As we wrap up this module, you should be familiar with how a call is set up in asterisk, as well as how our dial plan configuration factors into this call flow. You've also seen how the Astra CLI displays call activity. In the next few chapters, we'll learn more about the dial plan and see several other applications you can use to add features to your system.